guys, it's G Economics here, and I hope you've all had a, a very nice, uh, refreshing Easter break. And today, what I want to do is I want to run through. This is for people who are resitting the what will be the final year of the legacy specification for OCR GCE Economics. So those of you who are probably in year thirteen who are resitting the Markets in Action paper. That's paper F. Five eight one. Now I hope you're aware, and if you're not, it's generally the case that the exam, the actual paper, cannot repeat things which have been on in you generally speaking the previous three sessions on this particular exam paper. And so I'm going to talk to you about what has been on the previous three sessions, have a look at those areas see what areas of the specification that leaves us with and then have a look at areas which might be worth uh, focusing a little bit more of your attention on for revision purposes for the summer. Now of course this is not an exact science ladies and gentlemen and therefore I'm not saying that you should only study these areas but certainly these are the areas that perhaps might be more likely to be assessed in the June exam than not. So, if we look at the June 2015 paper, this paper was all about crops in the Po Valley uh, in Italy, I believe. And these are the general areas of assessment on that particular paper. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about all of these things. Um, you can get copies of these mark schemes and papers on the OCR website, obviously. You'll not be able to get a copy of the June 2015 uh, exam paper, however, on the OCR website, and I'll put a little Dropbox link in for you where you can pick that up and a copy of the mark scheme also. So, price elasticity of supply, the basic economic problem, a straightforward demand and supply diagram, consumer surplus was assessed, and alongside of asking you to define consumer surplus, you were also asked to identify the change in consumer surplus if there was a shift in supply in this particular instance. Price elasticity of supply calculations and interpretation of those particular uh, numbers that you calculate. Do remember, ladies and gentlemen, to bring a calculator to the exam. Very important for micro and macro, AS and A2. The determinants of price elasticity of supply, and then we move into the heavyweight questions, as you will. An analysis of whether a market is becoming more allocatively efficient. So you know allocative efficiency where price equals marginal cost. Comment question regarding whether rivers and or lakes can be considered to be truly public goods. And then finally the discussion question, so this is the essay question last year, was discuss whether subsidies to producers always correct market failure. So the key area on this one was subsidies. So that's June 2015. June 2014 was a paper where the case study was all about Airfix and the changing customer profile about who, who are actually buying these Airfix models. And here again we have the typical areas of assessment on this paper. So we had opportunity costs, factors of production, specialization, demand and supply diagram, and you're asked to explain it. The determinants of demand was assessed. Right, calculate and interpret income elasticity of demand. Remember, any of your elasticity calculations are always percentage change in quantity demanded. Percentage change in quantity demanded, always on the top line. If it's price elasticity of demand, then it's percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price on the bottom line. If it's income elasticity, percentage change in income on the bottom line. And of course, if it's cross price elasticity, again, it's percentage change in quantity demanded of good A, top line, divided by percentage change in price of good B, bottom line. A comment question with regard to reducing negative externalities. And then the discussion question, you'll remember that the previous one, 2015, was subsidies. 2014, discuss whether indirect taxation is the most effective policy measure to correct the market failure arising from negative externalities of production. Quite a nice little question. However, a lot of candidates, when they get into the L4 evaluation section, 
and they're trying to say, oh yes, taxation is great, but there are other methods uh, that can be used to control negative externalities, such as, well, whenever you get into that, if you go down that route, so if you say there are alternative solutions and you identify them, so you could talk about uh, subsidies and pollution permits and all these other types of uh, interventions, you must, if you do that, in L4, you must then discuss the effectiveness of such alternatives, comparing them to the indirect taxation policy. So if you're going to go along that route, that route rather, make sure that you compare them to the effectiveness of the taxation policy. Very important plan. And then lastly, let's have a look at June 2013. So the case study on this one was foreign holidays versus staycations. And it was all about tanning products and information failure. Areas of assessment on this one were factors of production, causes of a reduction in supply, demand and supply diagram. Now this one was interesting because it wasn't a simple explain question, it was a comment question. And so all I'm saying to you here ladies and gentlemen is Look very carefully at the stem of the word, the stem of the question. Look for the directive word and make sure that you do what the directive word is asking you to do. Is it to comment or is it to explain? And of course, if it's a comment, you have to explain it and then you do the comment at the end. Consumer surplus raising its head again. Income elasticity of demand. Allocative efficiency, the application of allocative efficiency to the holiday market. This is a tricky one, I remember marking this one at the time, not very well done at all by candidates. It was a common question with regard to information failure. And it was basically <clears throat> that candidates did not do well in this one because they did not structure their answer properly. So a question like this needs to be structured as follows. Explain why information, sorry, explain why uh, it's necessary to intervene to correct market the market failure, which is information failure in this case. Explain what would happen without doing so, and then say, in, in spite of having these uh, interventions in the market, such and such will happen. And then finally, the essay question, discuss whether regulation, so we've had Taxation, we've had subsidies, now we've got regulation, is the most effective solution to the market failure arising from information failure. And again, in the mark scheme, it says very clearly, if alternative solutions are included, the effectiveness of them must be compared with, that shouldn't say indirect tax, I'll have to amend that, that should say obviously in this case with regulation. So make sure that you do that. Now, what you can then do is, we know that these have been on the last three sessions, we can then go through our specification, and I'll put the specification up here in a moment, and have a look to see which areas of the specification are maybe more likely to be assessed on this occasion. So let me just <coughs> bring up a copy of the specification. Here it is. So this is the F581 spec. And you'll know that it's in three sections. We've got the reasons for individuals and organisations and societies having to make choices, competitive markets and how they work, and just scroll this on, market failure and government intervention. So I am now going to show you on this slide presentation which areas of the specification I think are potentially more likely to be assessed on this occasion. And I say again, and I stress, this is by no means uh, a done deal. I'm just saying you may wish to focus your revision on these areas. So your revision focus for the next five or six weeks. I think you should be looking at the following areas. So here I've got the first section of the specification, the reasons for individuals, organizations, and societies having to make choices. Well, this has not been assessed before. Explain how production possibility curves can be used to show scarcity, choice, and opportunity cost. Very straightforward question potentially coming on that area of the spec. 
If we then look to the second part of the specification, competitive markets and how they work, analyze the difference between shifts in demand and a movement along a demand curve, and shifts in supply. These things, you know, you're going to have to know these things anyway, so, you know, I'm not saying anything that's new to you here, but you'll, you'll have seen that consumer surplus appeared twice, nothing to do with producer surplus. So producer surplus is potentially an area. We've seen that uh, income elasticity of demand featured quite heavily, but nothing in the previous three sessions on cross-price elasticity of demand. So again, a potential area there. So anything to do with cross-price elasticity and the interpretations of it. And then a potential essay question, which to my memory, uh, since 2010, I don't think this has appeared in the new specification. Discuss whether competitive markets always lead to allocative efficiency. Now, that might not necessarily be the most straightforward essay, and certainly I am going to get my students to prepare an answer on that. Um, because it's an area of the spec yet to be assessed. And then finally, the third section of the specification for F581, market failure and government intervention. These areas yet to be assessed. Explain what's meant by market failure in terms of the inefficient use of scarce resources. Positive externalities haven't appeared in the last three sessions. Lots of stuff about negative, but not so much about positive. Merit and demerit goods. Hardly anything at all about that in recent times. And then you'll see in the specification, if you look at it, uh, evaluate the impact of, and it talks about indirect taxes, um, it talks about subsidies, it talks about regulation. But the other thing it talks about is tradable pollution permits and the provision of information as possible solutions to market failure. Now, this is an area in terms of an 18 mark, so you'd want to change that, evaluate, to discuss. In terms of a discussion 18 mark question, this is a potential area for an essay, I feel. And so, once again, something you may wish to consider for your uh, revision for F581. So that's all I want to say on that one, ladies and gentlemen. And um, as I say, I'll put up a couple of links for the June 2015 papers and mark schemes. And um, we'll leave it at that. So that's it. And I'll be back uh, very shortly with F582.